This episode, we're talking about race walking. With the current climate, that there has been an increase in people out walking, and we want to encourage all of those people to continue. Firstly, we're joined by recently crowned Australian Technical Official of the Year and current member of the International Panel of Race Walking Judges, Zoe Eastwood Bryson. We are also joined by one of the most knowledgeable persons about race walking, coach, judge, on the world panel for 27 years, event organiser. He was awarded an OAA Merit Award in 2014. You name it, he has done it in race walking, Mr Bob Cruz. Finally, we also welcome two athletes, both national record holders for their representative countries. Pramesh Prasad from Fiji holds the Fiji national record hold- records for the 5K, 10K, 30K and 50K race walk. And also, we, we're joined by Quinton Roo from New Zealand, seven-time national champion, multiple national record holder, two-time Olympian and a 50K qualifier for Tokyo. We welcome everyone and look forward to chatting all things race walking this week. explain a little bit about how you got involved in the sport. Okay, I got involved in the sport in 1975 actually as a discus and javelin thrower. Um, it wasn't until the early 80s that I actually met a race walker and he used to go out there and give him his drinks and his supplements and um, I thought, oh, I'd like this uh, officiating. So I started lap scoring and I started timekeeping. A few years later, Mr. Cruz came onto the scene and suggested that I become a race walking judge. So over the years, he's been my mentor and my support. And I've slowly worked my way through the Australian accreditation to become a level three um, NTO. Um, 2009, I was um, on the, got onto the panel of Oceania and a level two judge. 2010, I um, was invited by the IAAF to go to Paris to sit the Level 3 International Race Walking Exams and Seminar. I wasn't successful on that time, but 2014 came around and I was successful and was appointed to the panel then. 2018, I've been re-elected. Wow, that's, that's very impressive. Um, I did some Googling on, on you today, Bob, and I think... And there's a number of ways to describe you, but 27 years sitting on the the world panel of the international of the body in race walking is a fantastic achievement. Um, And it's something that probably doesn't get highlighted enough. um, Our officials and the longevity of you serving on that panel. Um, So briefly explain how you got involved in the sport. Uh, Thank you. Uh, I got involved because my kids got involved in little athletics and, uh, they were doing all right in running and the like, but one of them took a uh, particular interest in race walking and uh, he didn't start off too well. He was always at the back of the field and one day he decided he'd go a little harder and faster and he won his local little athletics event. And I thought, gee, I've got to find out something about race walking. So that's where I started. Uh, I then used, um, use is probably a wrong word, but it was pretty valid at the time. People like Ray Smith, who's now departed, he finished sixth in the 56 Olympics, he was an international judge, and Vic Sharp, a South Australian, who was also an international judge, I used them as my mentor. And uh, they pushed me through, uh, and I became an international judge in 1982, officiated the Commonwealth Games there, and as time went on, I, I was lucky enough to judge two Olympics, and hopefully Zoe will get round to that next year, uh, judging Olympics. And that's a tremendous experience. How did you get started in the sport? And then did you get started in other events or did you come to race walking fairly early on? Yeah, my journey started uh, uh, at age 15. Um, uh, I had a running background. So I was a junior athlete, uh, competed in the Coca-Cola Games and other junior uh, track and field events. Um, we had um, the Oceania Games uh, in 1990. Uh, Fiji hosted that game and we had the 20 kilometer walk in there so one of the uh, one of my coaches back then Atma Maraj introduced me into race walking and asked if I want to take part in that and looking back um, I had no idea about race walking um, never knew um, the track and field had a race race walk event uh, so because in Pacific Islands the race walking is not a, a popular sport and it's not part of a track and field event. So, so me to get involved in the race walking, it was something very exciting because I loved track and field events and loved competing and had a chance of representing the country at 16. So that was sort of my journey started at 
about uh, age 15 and had only, I think, a couple of months to prepare, land the technique and compete in the 20K. So I was um, similar to Pramesh in that I had a, came from a running background. I was a runner all the way through from primary school, high school, and through university. Um, race walking was something that I did see on the track, but it never really crossed my mind as something I could do. And um, it just wasn't really on the radar. No, and even going through athletics, we, we learned everything else. Um, you know, all the throws and jumps and sprints, hurdles, but race walking was just something that was never taught. Um, or even even through those um, those sort of kids programs, um, and it was only when I was um, so I was about 24, and I finally decided to I had to um, give running up because of a chronic Achilles injury, and did nothing for a while, um, and found I wasn't very good at doing nothing. So tried to get back into the sport, um, contacted the, um, the the legend Alan Potts, who's um, sadly passed away now, but he was a, a real legend of um, New Zealand track and field and lived not far from me um, on the east coast of New Zealand and um, his son showed me the technique about what to do and um, so got into it got into it that way so I was 24 when I took up race walking um, but I come from a uh, come from a distance running background um, before that. What are the main couple of rules of race walking and, and difference from me walking down the street to me going competitively doing race walking? Okay, there, the, the main distance is you've got to walk and you mustn't run. So there is a rule now, it's 54.2, so we've changed our rule, and that is that you must have one foot in contact with the ground at all times. That differentiates from running to walking. You can't run with one foot on the ground. The other one is that you've got to have what's called a straight knee. You can't have a bent knee. So when that advancing leg does strike the ground, that the knee is straightened and right through to the vertical. Again, that's what the judges are looking for. And that's the, that's the main thing that differentiates it from somebody that can run to somebody that can walk. You're both on the area, the world panel and have been part of the area panels. Why, why is there a need to have a level of judges more so than track and field? Um, because of the rule, we've got to, we've actually got to sit there and we have to visually, there are, depending if say it's a, um, a, a road event, there are eight judges plus a chief judge and we're all there to keep an eye on the athletes to make sure that, that they are adhering to the rule. It's a, it makes it a fair playing field for all the athletes then. So every judge is independent, no other judge speaks to another judge, you're in your own area and you judge what you see. So that way it keeps it fair. Free, three red cards if there isn't a penalty zone an athlete is disqualified or four if there is a penalty zone being used for the event we've had so many great walkers but there still seems to be a stigma about race walking what why do you, you guys have been involved in race walking for a long time why do you think that there is and is there ways of you think to remove this stigma and get more people into the sport i guess if you for example if you don't know anything about these uh, stock exchange stock market you don't invest. You don't know anything about football. You don't go and watch a game. And I think in race walking, if you don't know anything about the rules, you seem to think that it's, yeah, don't know anything about it. Why should I bother? Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's just a, a, a self-fulfilling prophecy that it's not as popular and therefore not as many people do it. Um, it is something that does look unusual the, the first time you do it, um, which is unfortunate because when... Uh, I've got friends, say, from, from Ireland and, and the States, and the first time they look at a game of cricket, they're like, what the heck is going on? What are those people doing? It just looks completely absurd. And when you grow up with it, like I did, um, it, it's just, you don't question it. It just, that's just, that's how you bowl, that's how you bat, that's how you feel. Um, and it's only when you come in with a fresh set of eyes that you realise, actually, it's a kind of ridiculous sport. Um, and all sports are really um, fundamentally um, weird if you haven't seen them before i mean um, i had experience uh, as a as a young you know, 15 year old starting walk racing in fiji um you know i was the only only athlete you know um doing the walk racing and and everybody around me had no idea what what i'm doing so i, I remember as a 15 year old um it was a bit, bit daunting um uh, because i was i was uh, laughed at uh, i was uh, name was called uh, but you know, it, it was a bit hard because, you know, we didn't have uh, walk race events in our track and field events, so the knowledge wasn't there. I think the people didn't know about what's, what this sport is all about. 
and that's something that I want to change, I think, um, and try to promote that uh, through Pacific Islands or in Fiji too. You know, get in. I hope I can get uh, a event in Coca-Cola Games. As you probably know, Tom, that Coca-Cola Games is a pretty big event in Fiji. You know, and uh, a lot of a lot of kids just love that uh, championship. So if we can have even a 1500 meters, you know, race walk on the track for senior athletes or things like that, and that will hopefully you know encourage other young athletes. Race walking is a great family uh, event in our local club. We have mums and dads and the kids all competing. That's been going for years. It's something you can get together and uh, uh, enjoy together. Yeah, it, it is interesting. I, I, I never probably thought of that. As it is one sport that your whole family can do, whether mum, dad and children can all do it at the same time in the same race. There's not many sports out there that can do that. Maybe explain some of the benefits of, of race walking and what you found, maybe comparing it to other events that you've done. Uh, personally, for me, you know, uh, taking up rock racing gave me opportunity to represent the country, um, you know, because I love track and field, uh, to get more involved in track and field um, and uh, had opportunity to come to Melbourne, compete. And also I competed in the uh, World Cup in 95. Uh, that was the first time Fiji had a, a team in the World Cup. And so, you know, gave me a lot of opportunities. My other job as a physio, um, I'm, I'm interested in sort of and the, the nature of uh, injuries and, and that kind of thing. And race walking has a much lower injury rate. However you cut it, whether it's you do it per hour's walk or per 100 kilometres or, or per person over, over a year, um, walking has a lower injury rate um, than running, which is a little bit um, counter to what a lot of people just assume when they look at it people see it and that it's usually something that's quite foreign looking to people and because it's looking it looks a little bit um, different to what people are used to they assume that it's putting some unusual stress on the body but um, if you look at every joint in the in, in the body as you race well, nothing no no individual joint is doing anything unusual it's just put together in a way that is unique to the sport um, so I think race has got a, got a, a, a huge benefit to that um, What's the most exciting, the biggest race that each of you have been involved in? Is there a most memorable race that, that you've been involved in? Uh, I think it has to be the 2000 Olympics uh, <laughs> when I, uh, I put the third red card, I was judging it, and I put the third red card in on the winner, uh, Segura of Mexico, and then uh, there were appeals that went through all sorts of levels. But... Uh, Yes, that was uh, certainly exciting. And uh, in that same Olympics, the disqualification of Jane Savile was, uh, and I would judge that race. So there's a whole lot of highlight, not quite sure it's a highlight, but certainly uh, one of the uh, most interesting experiences of my uh, race walking career. I suppose one of my first ones would be an event that the Chinese invited me to. And it was my <coughs> first time of judging outside of Australia and I'm standing there judging and 140 walkers are coming towards me. In Australia, we may get 20, 30, 140. And Bob had already told me what to do. And it was, wow, it was incredible. Obviously, the 2015 World Championships were great for me because it was my first IAAF appointment. But the, again, the Commonwealth Games, I think, because it, being at home, it was different again. Um, as a, as a chief judge, you've got all your judges out, the race starts, and you normally go and do a lap of the course to make sure your judges are in the right position, you've got people in the right... And I was walking down, and I heard people cheering, I thought, oh, there's athletes coming behind me, I'd better get out of the way. No, it was our local South Australian race walkers that were up there who were calling out to me. It's the awesome judge, you know, and it was just nice to be recognised by them as well. Again, we had highs and lows in that event. Obviously, the Australians winning both the men and the women, and unfortunately, me having to... Yeah, uh, show a red paddle to one of our Australian athletes is not always brilliant. But as a chief judge, it's something you have to do. I mean, you know the walkers on and off the field, but when they're on a race, all they are is to, to a race walking judge is a pair of legs. What's the most memorable race that you guys have been involved in um, individually? For me, as a, as, a, as a junior athlete, you know, starting um, in walk racing and representing the country uh, as a young age um, and also winning uh, gold medal for for the country. So in uh, mini, uh, in I think '93, I won the mini suffrage games gold medal in the in the walking event. Um, so that was sort of my highlight. And um, and going to um, uh, World Cup 
um, taking a team to to China, um, competing with the with the elite athletes. You know, it's just an eye opener um, to see so many walkers. Um, you know, it's something that you you never forget. Uh, probably, if I had had to say one memorable race, it would have probably been the London Olympics. Um, so I had I started the sport in 2008, so like I said, at the age of 24, and was basically I, I did have some some guidance um, from a few people, um, but I was through that journey. I was writing my own programs and um, largely doing my own thing, and and so it was within four years um, qualified for the London Olympics. So it was it was a real whirlwind from getting into the sport. I did race the world champs the year before, um, but the Olympics were just another level entirely, especially coming from New Zealand where you might have, in a race, you might have five competitors, you'll have six judges, you'll have literally zero spectators. The only people watching are the people, are the officials or the you know parents of kids who are just waiting to take their kids home as soon as possible and get out of there. Um, and walking into the mall, in London where there were, I don't know, it was something like 50,000 spectators. Um, it was pretty crazy. So many um, New Zealand expats as well living in South London. A lot of people I went to university with were, were out there and it was, it was just surreal having, um, having that big a crowd, that big an event, you know, the, the whole Olympic Village experience. It was, it was pretty mind blowing. Well, thank you. It's great to hear people so passionate about race walking and people who've um, got to the pinnacle in, I think it's nice to hear that one being at a home games, rather if you're an athlete or an official being involved in a home championship is something that people will never forget. Um, not many events come to Oceania and come to our area. So it is fantastic to be involved in any capacity. Um, we thank you for your time tonight um, and really appreciate you taking us through the ins and outs of race walking. Very much for your time. No doubt. Um, <laughs>